the reason we can hold on to that faith is because it's not by our power anyway. Whatever we're believing for is not by our power. It's going to be by his spirit. Amen. Worship with us. Come on, put your hands together this morning and worship the Lord. It's not by your mind, nor by your power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's not by your mind, nor by your power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Behold, do a new thing, move with my cloud, and I shall bring. to him this morning. This song says we, not the worship team, not the band, we lift our worship. So this is between you and him. This is your time to give back to him. This is how your time to tell him how much you love him and how much he means to you. Amen. We lift our worship to you, our King. Maker and ruler of everything Yours is the name that's above all names And we worship and give you praise We lift our worship to you our Lord Author of heaven and earth below Every knee will bow and proclaim you are God and you're still the same. Yours is 
God deserves all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. 
How many of us truly believe that God deserves our hallelujah? Let's lift him up, church. Let's praise his mighty name. He deserves it. He is more than worthy. He's not just the King of Kings. He's not just the Lord of Lords. He is our Father. He is our Abba. He is our healer. He is worthy. He, he is our counselor. He is our comforter. Hallelujah. Let's praise him, church. Let's praise him, church. Let's praise him like we praise our favorite football team, church. Let's praise him like we praise our favorite basketball team, church. No need to be shy in church. No need to be shy in church. Let's give him all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. He is more than worthy. He deserves all of you, not just some of you. He deserves every ounce of you from your mind, from your body. He deserves it all. He wants it all. He wants your tongue. He wants your thoughts. He wants to track in your life in a way that you couldn't even imagine. Jesus, we come to you this morning just thanking you first and foremost, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Praising you in the midst of Jesus Christ. Why? Because your word says, do not be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. Do not be anxious about anything, but instead with prayer petition and thanksgiving, present your request unto the Lord and God's peace which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, Lord. So right now we are thanking you in the midst, thanking you in the midst of a heartbreak, thanking you in the midst of a disappointment, Thanking you in the midst of our waiting season. Thank you in the midst of it all, Lord. Hallelujah. You have caught every tear in the name of Jesus. You have healed every bone in the name of Jesus. You have walked with us. You have directed our path. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you are going to do, Jesus. And because of your power, we are able to praise you in the midst. We are able to lift up your holy and mighty name in the midst. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We lift up your holy and mighty name. You come first in our life, not last. You're not second behind anything and I know situation. Nothing has caught you by surprise, Lord. There is nothing going on that you are not aware of. Hallelujah. We thank you for the joy that doesn't make any sense. We thank you for the peace that doesn't make any sense. We thank you for a sound mind that doesn't make any sense. Sometimes when we talk about our peace, people think we're crazy. And we thank you for that, Jesus Christ. Because we know that at the end of the day, you won. Uh, uh, we're looking at a giant, but nothing is greater than you. Nothing is bigger than you. Lord, you have told us that you won. You give more than what this world can give. Ha, this peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you in advance. We thank you in admits. And we thank you for everything you've already done. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we say amen. Again, must be something I ate 
Some songs, some shows, some hate. Mm-hmm. The devil wants to extend the game. Free throws. And when it ends, he wants to make the sequel. Cause if he has another chance, he feels like he can take my joy, my peace, my faith. See the devil, he learns from your mistakes, even if you don't. Mm-hmm. And that's how he keeps you in cycles, 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 cycles. But I'm not going in cycles. I wanted to, I win. The enemy will have to lose again. Cause see, I'm a different fighter now. And I have got to thank. Cause his joy is my strength. See the devil, he'll learn it's a mistake. When I am sure, oh, 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 I'm not going in cycles, I'm not going in, I choose to break these.
cycles. Cycles. You know, you know as, as Celeste was ministering in song, we were worshiping, and she mentioned like generational things. In, in the Bible, I think most of you know the story of the children of Israel. They were slaves in Egypt. And they came out of slavery and came out. And the idea of coming out was to enter the promised land. An 11 day journey turned into a 40 year odyssey. And, and what God said, because they wouldn't enter the promised land, because they still had the slave mentality, it's not a criticism, it happens. They wouldn't enter the promised land. And so the Lord said, that whole generation has to die off. And then the next generation, then I'll allow them to enter. You meet a mountain for a moment, okay? okay? So for 40 years, they're going around the mountain. 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 Now see, if I was one of the children, I would recognize that in order for us to enter in, some people and some things gotta die. Yes. Yes. And see, for a lot of us, the reason we haven't entered the promised land, there's still some things we're holding on to. That's why we keep going in cycles. And we can quote, and we can say that the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, ha, the name of Jesus. No, we can say it all day long, but until you believe it, until you get it into your heart. Because see, I, I know we got this thing now, just speak it, girl, just speak it into existence. No, no, that's a lie from the enemy. Mm -mm. Yes, I know death and life are in the power of the tongue, but see, it's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. So if it's not in your heart, if it's some idle word, idle word means non-performing. And most of us are speaking non-performing words. You got to get it into your heart. You got to get settled. And, and so for me, it's like to break out of the cycle, the generational cycle that was in my family, I had to do some shift in my thinking. I grew up in church. My daddy was a pastor. I lived in church. Every time the church doors opened, we were there. Come from old school church. Well, we couldn't go up into the pool pit. You know, get clothes and on. Boy, don't you, boy, you better not go up in there. That little communion table, remember, and do this in remembrance of me. Don't you touch that. Don't you put nothing on that. See, that's old school church. And see, my granddaddy was a pastor. My granddaddy was a pastor. But here is my point. Pastoring, still got them cycles. Got them cycles. So many Christians still in that cycle. Still in that cycle. Still in that cycle. At some point, you got to make a decision. You know what? It's time to enter in. It's time for me to turn. It's time for me to turn and to enter in. But in order to do that, the old things got to pass away. You got to let them die. And for many of us, we still holding on to traumatic things. And the way we hold on to them, the way we hold on to them is that we learn how to behave based on prior experiences. And so we try to bring that into the present. The truth that's not going to jive. See, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Your outer world is a direct reflection of your inner world. You cannot live apart from your self-perspective. Your self-perspective and your quality of life will be congruent. And that's why when you take somebody and elevate them and all of a sudden they'll self-sabotage to bring themselves back down because the inside didn't shift. That's why as a country we keep giving people stuff, keep giving people stuff and there's not a shift. Now, so we can look at like welfare recipients and put them down. But I'm going to tell you something. You can have your $100,000 a year job and guess what? You can still be in bondage too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be caught up in cycles also. But it's been that way for so long, you don't even recognize it anymore. You don't even recognize it anymore. But God is calling us up higher. He is calling us up higher. And at some point there has to be a release and before there is there an apprehension. Because we're trying to lay hold of the kingdom of God, but still keep our foot, one foot in with the devil. Father in heaven, we thank you. I thank you. As I lift up this congregation, I lift up second service, Father God. I lift up all those at the marriage retreat, dear Lord God. I lift up to others that are doing other things this Sunday, Father God. And I lift this entire New Day Christian Fellowship Church congregation up to you. And I thank you, Lord, that we are people that will not keep going around that mountain. That we will understand that the cycle needs to be broken. We would have the courage to think differently and be differently, Heavenly Father. To be renewed in our minds. Takes courage, Heavenly Father. To be healed. Takes courage, Heavenly Father. Takes faith. I know we're talking. But now it's time to be about it. So that we can bring glory and honor to your name. Your name. That name. <laughs> that name. That name. That name. 
So we say thank you, Lord God. Cycles are broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Cycles. No more. No more. Broken. Free. Oh, the sign is set free. It's free indeed. Free. Yes. No more cycles. You got to make the declaration in your life. No more cycles. No more cycles. No more cycles. No more cycles. I'm finished with that. I'm through with that. I'm through with that. I'm through with that. I'm through with that. We learn how to cope. Father, we thank you. We're cycle free. Say I'm cycle free. Cycle free. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. Powerful. Yes. Powerful. Thank you. It's powerful. Thank you, guys. Powerful, Pastor Todd. Powerful. Yes. Amen. Woo. Amen. Amen. Mm. Yeah, let's make that decision today not to go back to what you know you don't need to go back to. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Not happening. Uh, I'm finished with that stuff. Uh, I let it go. Yes. Uh, you know, too, it's sometimes we so afraid of missing out. You know, we. we I know. I, you, it's so much stuff we can live without. Yeah. It's so much stuff we can do without. Yes. Yes. It's yes. a lot from the enemy. I got to have this, got to see this, got to know it. It doesn't yes. have to be like that. And there's some people you can live without, too. <laughs> Amen. If they're not for you. They don't need to be with you. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I remember, I, I didn't mean to Sasha put it one time. Just because they're in your circle doesn't mean they're in your corner. Yeah. Is that how you said it? Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. See, I'll be listening to you. <laughs> Just because they're in your circle doesn't mean they're in your corner. Yes. And we're yes. so afraid of letting yes. people go. Yep. Yep, because when you let them go, then God can bring the person that's supposed to be in your life that's going to help you move forward to go for, to in Him. Go ahead, First Lady Jackie. <laughs> the same one that told me, no, you can't pastor, we can't start no church. Look at you. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, everybody, welcome. My name is Tony Dunn. I'm the senior pastor here at New Day. I'm also the bishop over the New Day Global Network of Churches. It's my awesome, amazingly sweet, beautiful, fine, hot wife, Jackie. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hey, do we have anyone with us for the very first time? First Raise time your hand. in the service, your hand. just lift your hand welcome, up your very welcome, first time. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Just lift your and hand welcome. up. Amen. Awesome, awesome, Amen. awesome, awesome, awesome. Amen. So glad you're awesome. with us today. Thank you, thank you. Our first, our, our, our ushers have given you guys a first time guest card. What I'm going to ask you to do, I know it's so bold of me, but if you can't, please complete the card. At the end of service, we're going to dismiss you, and you'll be directed to our uh, Connection Center. And there we have a special gift just for you guys. It's our way of saying thank you for being a part of today's yes, service. Yes. Amen? And I want you to know that your presence does much to enhance our worship experience. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Hey, can everyone stand? Wait. You don't have to, huh? Oh, no, yeah. Online. 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 Hey, online people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know. You guys are neglected. No, you're not. You guys are important to us, too. Yes. Especially yes. you guys that are coming in. Um, I understand our highest viewership is from South Africa and from Brazil. Yes. Thank you guys for being a part. We really appreciate you and love you too. So, yes, amen. Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome. In fact, South Africa, I'm going to see you this first week in July. First week in July. And Brazil, we'll be back in September to see you guys too. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, can everyone... No, no. You got to do the connect. Yes. Hey, I'm happy to be back. <laughs> We are excited to see you guys. We had a blessed time over on the other side of the world, but we are happy to be home. It's three weeks. Yes. Woo. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay. Do the your okay. new so you, connect thing. So, <laughs> so that you guys are online, we want to connect with you. We want to know how you have any questions, any thoughts, or anything you want to share with us. So text New Day Connect at 94000 for anything that you want to know in regards to the ministry or questions or just whatever you want what to share. What if they want to um, join the church? If you want to join the church, text New Day Connect at 94000. What if they've never received Jesus Christ as their Savior? We want you to see receive Jesus Christ. So 
could text New Day Connect at 94000. I got one for you. What if they want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Text New Day Connect at 94000 and watch God move in your life miraculously that you've never seen before. Amen. Can everybody stand, please? You don't have to hug one another, but, but turn, a, wave, and say, Welcome, welcome to, to New Day! Day. Welcome to New Day! Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning so grateful for this opportunity to hear from heaven, dear Lord God. Thank you for these great people. Thank you for this opportunity, dear Lord God, to share what you placed in my heart. Thank you for giving me a word in season to them that may be weary. Literally today, Father God, the weariness. I want to speak to it, dear Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. As, as even Tajalea was praying at, at the beginning of the service, Heavenly Father, that we don't get weary in well-doing, dear Lord God, that we encourage ourselves, dear Lord God, in you, Father God. That's my prayer. And I pray, I pray to everyone as used to hear what your spirit is saying today, that this word is being sown on good ground. And I'm thanking you, Lord, ahead of time for a 30, 60, and 100 fold return of what's being sown. In Jesus' mighty master's name, let all who agree say, amen, 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 amen. Okay, I want to make a declaration. I work hard. I work hard. I do a lot. I do a lot. Now, you guys that are kind of like, he's kind of conceited. No, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's going to look kind of weird at first. It's going to be a dip, and y'all going to be like, where is he going? Then we're going to come up, and then when we finish, I think y'all be clapping. You're going to be clapping, okay? Just give you a little heads up. So, um, Abri, can you show me these? Uh, bring up the pictures. I want to share this with you guys. So, this is Pastor Linda. So, I pastor about 30 other pastors. Amen? Next slide, please. That's Pastor Archie. He requires time and attention also. Next, past, next slide, please. There's groups of pastors. That's, that's Bishop Godfrey. You know, that's Bishop Stanley right there. Lots of people. I'm always pastoring. Next one, please. That's New Day Europe, some of the leaders there. We just got started with that last year. Amen? That's a new network. Amen? Amen. Next one, please. Okay, that's Zambia. New Day Zambia right there. New Day Kitwe. Next one, please. Okay, that's Pastor Chris from Kenya. Next one, please. He was here for two weeks. That's the team we literally just got back from. That's in Israel. That's the tabernacle, a life-size replica of the tabernacle that the children of Israel went um, uh, when, when they came out of Egypt, okay? And we spent time inside of there. That's the team. That's the team of 50. Literally, we just finished leading them. Amen? Right, Sister Iva? Amen. Amen. She was there. Amen. Amen. And Sister jo um, um, Joanne, too, right? Amen. Next one, please. Okay, that's for next year. We're going to have our New Day Global Network Conference in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That's 2023. Amen. <laughs> next one, please. So Jack and I were down there scouting it out. That's a workshop I did for the leaders of New Day Brazil. There's their certificates. That's New Day Brazil. Okay, next one, please. Okay, that's, that's Found City. Another, that's another church. That church is in Indala, Zambia. Spend some time with those leaders. I'll be back with them the third Sunday in July of this year, I believe. Okay, next one, please. Okay, that's a Zoom call I did. That's Pastor, that's Apostle um, Carson on the bottom there with the yellow thing around his neck. That's relent. He's in Poland. That y'all pray for him because I just heard Russia think of invading Poland. Okay, it just yeah, keep him lifted up. Okay, and his family. He just got there. Okay, and then that's that's Relinda's who's done work in Ghana and in uh, Kenya. Um, um, Nigeria and Cameroon, Africa, with young people, thousands of young people. And of course, there's Daniel and Arlene who are, in who are, who are doing work in Latin America. And their focus is Guatemala and um, El Salvador. And now Daniel's looking at Cuba also. And guess what? They speak Spanish. And while we're in Israel, uh, the tour company we work with, they're Spanish speakers. And all of a sudden, we need an interpreter. And there's Arlene going around interpreting and leading. And when she finished that one particular little tour, I said, why, why do you think God let you experience this? Ah, I, I, got, I can see an expansion of taking Spanish-speaking people to Israel. Next slide, please. That's me in, in, at the Gillette Stadium where the New England Patriots pray. Because one of our, our young men, J.J. Taylor, told me he would, when he was here in the offseason, I said, how can I support you? He said, I need you to come see me. So we got on a plane. We flew to go see him. Next slide, please. Okay, yeah, we support the young people. That's David, Ar uh, uh, David Arby right there. Who <laughs> He's funny. I love him. And that's his brother Johnny. He plays basketball. Next slide, please. Okay, that's C.J. Broy. We support him too. You see at his game. Next slide, please. 
Next slide, please. That's young master right there. Love him. Love that young man. So me and Pastor Brian with him right there. Next slide, please. That's now, that's for the city of Corona. That's, um, um, Lord, help me, Jesus. Corona Life Services, okay? And, and that's one of the board members, and, and that's the director there. And um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Lindros, the director, Melissa Lindros there. And so I do a lot of work with them, and that's a whole other story too, okay? That's my local stuff I do. Next slide, please. That's my pastor, Bishop Ed. And if y'all know anybody that's the hardest working man in Christianity is him. And, and he, he, he be working like a Hebrew slave, okay? So it's like, turn him over here and over here. So I serve as vice president for the Zoe Association. And that guy, that's uh, Jonathan Ziegel right there, who's Governor Gavin Newsom's international business director. So we met with him, okay? And we're doing some international stuff with him. Next slide, please. And that's my, Michael Jr., the Christian comedian. I think he's like the number three, Chris, number three Christian comedian in America. I'm on his board also. So you say, why is Bishop in Dallas? I'm going to the board meeting. Now, Michael Jr. has won, I think it's close to 60,000 people to the Lord over the last couple of years. So he has this new thing he's doing called um, a Funny How Marriage Work. It's in a marriage intensive. In fact, he just had one in Brea, California uh, this past Saturday, uh, this past Saturday. Amen. So he's amazing. So that was one in Dallas. Jack and I flew to be a part of. Next one, please. I told you all to do a lot. I also know how to chill out. So that's me and Nico, Minister Sean, and, and Deacon Don Emerson. We're playing tennis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me, let me tell you something. The word, that's recreation, right? Recreation. Break it down. Re. Create. I ain't gonna charge you for that one today. Next slide, please. Okay, and that, that's my family. Guess what? You say, well, yeah, you're doing that. Or everybody else is my family. That's my Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray is one of the number one, sculpt, one of the top sculptors in America. He's done stuff like civil rights stuff all over in Minneapolis. He go in the airport in Atlanta, he has pieces. In Shreveport, he has pieces. In St. Louis, in, in L.A., he did the bust of Jesse Owens for the Olympics. He's a guy. So he just had a big art show down in Savannah, Georgia. And guess what? Me and Jackie went to see that to support our family. Next one, please. And that's my cousin, uh, Carrie, and cousin Keith. You guys see, when you see Michael Jackson, the last trial that he had, uh, with, with the child molestation, see these two buff dudes walking with him. They're my two cousins, okay, with Michael Jackson. So my Aunt Frances passed, and those two, they came from Arizona and Texas, respectfully, and so I had to do the funeral. Now, here's the thing about the funeral, because when it happened, I mean, the, the, the morning of the service, I got a call from my pastor's, why, uh, my pastor's, slow down, Tony. Y'all ain't going nowhere, right? Yeah, slow down. So my wife, um, my wife, my, my aunt died, my mom's sister, and her pastor calls me the morning of and said his wife had been exposed to COVID, so he wasn't coming to service. Can you do the service? So that we, by our we getting ready, we was, I was dressed, walking out the hotel door. And so I said, I do a lot. Next slide, please. And that's my, I love her so much. That's Ella, the smartest three-year-old on the planet. You think I'm playing? I'm going to show you some clips, okay? And so we're there in Dallas to spend time with her also. Amen? I'm Pops, and that's Nona, okay? Next one, please. Nope, did that one. Next one. Oh, that's Jeff. Next one, please. And that's my, my son and my daughter-in-law. It's my grandbaby right there, okay? So I spend time with them on a regular, too. Next one, please. That's my nephew, Miles. So here's the thing. Miles calls me whenever Miles wants to call me. The rest of y'all got to make an appointment. Miles has Christ questions about Christianity and the Bible. He calls Uncle Tony. To y'all, I'm bishop. To y'all, I'm pastor. To him, that's Uncle Tony. And so when Miles was ready to be baptized, guess what? I went and baptized my nephew. Amen? That's my brother and his wife. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Next, next one, please. Okay, that's Kingston right there. That, that's uh, Kingston. In fact, Jackie, when he was born, Jackie was in the delivery room. Jackie saw him literally come into this world. So that's Kingston. He was getting ready for school, so we wanted to hang out. We spent a whole day together, went down to Dana Point and San Juan Capistrano, walked on rocks, through, through rocks of the seagulls. Don't tell nobody. So um, had a great time with him. Next slide, please. And, of course, that's my amazing wife. Amen. Got to do the QT. Quality of time. So that's why I tell you guys, don't text me on a Friday. Now the new ones don't text me on a Monday because I've shifted. Date day is Mondays now. So we, sometimes we get up, we play tennis, and then sometimes we go to breakfast. Sometimes we hang out. And I, we hang out. I love y'all, but I love her too. See, some of y'all like fleeting. She is forever. Hallelujah. Next one, please. 
Is that it? Okay, that's it. I can't now, do I work hard? And that's just a little bit. But I, I, I want to show you why. So today's message is called Sweet Dreams. It's like, Bishop, how do you do it? How do you do it? I want to show you something. Now, here's the thing. When, I, when we look at this closely, initially, you're going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. This is elementary, but I need you to stay with me because it's spiritual. It's spiritual. Proverbs 3, 4. Watch this. New King James Version. Proverbs 3, 4. New King James Version. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be what? Your sleep will be what? When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Some of us are afraid to go to sleep because we're scared we're gonna, what we're going to wake up to. Uh, I'm not going to be afraid. Yes, you will lie down. You will lie down. And your sleep will be sweet. I like me some sweet sleep. Let me tell you one thing about me. I will go to sleep. So I talk about that 13 and a half hour flight we had. And Jackie, God bless her, she watching movies. I'm doing my work. I'm still working on my, my doctorate. And I, I still got, you know, now I'm in a dissertation phase. I got to do all this research. I'm putting all this stuff together, putting this stuff together. And, and so when, I, when, I, when I, my eyes started to get a little dim, guess what? I closed that laptop, put it back up there, and I closed my eyes. And I went to sleep. He said, well, have you seen a new King Richard movie? No. I like Will Smith. I ain't like him slapping Chris Rock, but I like Will Smith. Now, I'm sorry, Will. I'm going to have to catch you next time or catch you when I can. I like tennis. I like Venus and Serena. I do. And they're from Compton, CPT. Okay. So, but I need, I need my sleep. Repeat this phrase with me. I must lie down so that I can stay up. Bishop, how you get all that done? I go to sleep. I go to sleep. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You're like, that's all. No, listen to me. The enemy plays mind games. When Celeste was up here ministering early, she said the enemy, you know, he watches your mistakes and he learns from us, but we don't learn. And where does the enemy attack? The mind. The mind. The mind. So what, what, what happens to our thinking and reasoning when we don't get sleep? You ever know it's like you, go, you, grunch, you, know, you grumpy. You need to go take a nap. See, you don't have to tell me. As soon as I feel that coming on, I, baby, I'm going to take a nap. Jackie told me, and I'm not exaggerating, I would say at least 50 times, and I'm, I think I'm being conservative, over these last three weeks, I love you, I'm proud of you, I support you, and I appreciate you. Now, I need you to think about something. We've been married 37 years. We got three weeks of her and I arm in arm. We had one time we were apart. When she wanted to go do some shopping in Brussels, say, you, you, you know, but baby, go ahead. I'm going to go to sleep. And I went to sleep. So repeat after me again. I must lie down. So that I can stay up. Now, look at Mark 6, 31. Let me show you. Okay, here we go. Now, this is Jesus. Watch this. This is so important. It's so important. Stay with me. Mark 6, 31. It says here, and he said to them, this is Jesus. Now, let me, let me give you context. So, the disciples had gone out and laid hands on people that cast out demons and was healing the sick people and feeding. And they had done a lot of ministry. And he sent them out two by two. And then they came back to tell Jesus, like, hey, the demons are subject to us in your name. And they're giving him the report. Now, watch how Jesus responds. He said to them, come aside by yourselves to a, what kind of place? And let's do what? Who is saying this? Now, don't raise your hands, but I, 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 I'm almost certain 90% of you didn't know this was in the Bible. Now, you know I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And that's not nothing wrong with that. You can. Hallelujah. Greatest he doesn't meet her. He doesn't in the world. Girl, his angel isn't camped around about me. And, and that's true. But he also said, you need to go somewhere and sit down for a while. And rest. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. I see some people, I don't know, I'm working. I'm, go to sleep. I go to sleep. Well, what's going to happen if, I don't know, just go to sleep. 
And here's the part, too, because we live in a country. Now, I want you to tell you about our culture. We're all about productivity. We're Americans. And I don't realize how much of an American I am until I go to another country. I, I, don't, I don't reckon it because they don't do the things that I do. And especially a lot of my, you know, my African brothers and sisters and, and my Latinos. But I learned this about the Egyptians while I was there. The, the Egyptian tour guy said, okay, we're doing it on Egypt time. I was like, is it like CP time? Colored people, I enemy mean, go slow. Okay, yeah. And the same thing with the Egyptians. And, and it's funny because culture, culture is so strong. But in America, we go, go, go. We make it happen. We celebrate. You remember the 80s, the go, go, go 80s? Everybody was, oh, man. No, I'm going somewhere to rest. And it says rest a what? A while. And, and here's the context. Watch this. For there were many coming and going. So there's still a lot of ministry needs to be done. I'm not, I'm not ignorant of all that needs to take place in my life and what your responsibilities are. I'm not saying to minimize it. It's there, but I still need to rest for a while. This, how do you keep doing all that? I go to sleep. Go to sleep. I will in a heartbeat. And Jackie cracks me up. I don't know how you just drop off because I'm, I'm intentional. <laughs> for there were many coming and going. And they did not even have time to eat. 32, look at 32. So they departed to a deserted place and a boat by them. What? So if the apostles who were with Jesus, anointed and appointed, <laughs> if they needed to rest, what does that say about us? If they're walking with Jesus, I mean, they, they like literally hanging with Jesus. I know for some of you, Jesus was in your bedroom last night. He visits you once a week, talks to you. He sits in a carpool lane with you. That's your excuse for getting in a carpool lane. You got two people. I'm, I'm rolling with the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Tell it to the police officer. You write me that ticket. Okay. <laughs> so if they needed to rest, what does it say about us? So one of the things, too, can I have the picture of the Alpha team, please? Because one of the things I do here is that once a year, we take all the ministers at New Day, we do a getaway. This past year, we, the January, we were in San Diego. Yeah, we're in San Diego. The last time before COVID, we were in uh, Palm Springs. Before that, we're in Huntington Beach. It's like, why are you taking away? Because it's Bible. <laughs> Ain't my fault you don't read it. I don't know what they're doing at that church. He just, I'm just doing what the Word of God says. That's all. That's all. So my point is that if the men and women who are called of God, these people, this, this Alpha team, they're of the fivefold ministry, they have said to me, I've heard the call of God. I got the call of God on my life. I'm, an, I'm, I'm, I, I'm called to the fivefold ministry. I mean, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. And so if you tell me that, then I embrace you. And we're going to work together. And so if these people need to rest, what does it say about everybody else? Look at verse 32 again. So they departed to a deserted place in a boat by themselves. And I got a question for you. Of every 3,000 people that move into, that join, or go to a seminary, a seminary is, an, okay, let me distinguish. You have, like, I know a lot of pastors, they start a, a Bible college, Bible institute, a Bible training program for their church. That's cool. That's, I love that. We had one in my last church. Elder Abraham has come up with an outline for this one. And by the way, it was dynamic. And that's something we're going to institute here. It's awesome. Okay. And then you have some that, that will get accredited by, a, like, a Christian agency saying this is really good. Then you got oh, those uh, seminaries or Bible colleges that are accredited by the government. So those ones that you got to pay thousands of dollars to attend, that's the one I'm talking about right now, okay? Now, uh, for every 3,000 that go and get their master's in divinity, I mean, they go and get their, 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 their master's in biblical studies or something, for every 3,000, only 10 finish in ministry. Three thousand, ten. So my question to you is, why do pastors burn out? Why do pastors burn out? What happens? You don't get rest. You start to worry about stuff. What are people? What about the people? I know some dear people like that. I know this has happened to some pastors. People will leave the church. They can't get out of bed the next day. We've had people leave the church here. I'm out there playing tennis the next day. I'm good. Oh, you don't care. I do care. I intercede and I pray. But if you tell me you got to go, you got to go. My life is not built on your church attendance. Do I love you? Yes. 
Have you noticed that even when you don't come to church, I love you the same? I run into people out in the streets, see them all the time. I live in Corona. <laughs> I see you ain't been in church. Oh, my favorite is Facebook. I can't come to church with COVID, but you was at the concert. How you going to potent and whatever? Back to mid pastors who can't burn out. Why do they burn out? So my question is, how do you burn out when you got the anointing of God on your life? It's not a criticism. But see, I'm going to finish. I've already decided I'm going to finish. And one of the reasons I know I'm going to finish is because I go to sleep. This go, go, go culture. No. Culture influences perspective, perspective, perception. So, let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. The American culture that we live in influences how we interpret the Word of God. Go to Genesis 1-5. Watch this. Genesis 1-5. Please take notes on this. Please take notes on this. Genesis 1-5. Watch this. God, and this at the beginning, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Y'all know that. Okay, watch this. Genesis 1-5. And it, it, this is at the creation, okay? God called the light, what? And the darkness he called, What? So the evening and the morning were the what? What was the first day? When does your day start? Uh-huh. See, our day, I'm a girl, I'm about to start my day. My day starts at night. So my, the way I kick my day off is I go to sleep. That's when my day starts. Because that's Bible. Now, see, again, culturally speaking, we think it starts in a day because we get up and go to work. I'm not criticizing. I told you, hang on, okay? Hang on. I need you to rethink because I've learned. The reason I can do what I do. Now, now here's a kicker. Before I start all this bishop pastoring stuff, I drove a truck for 16 years. Some of y'all, you saw it. Big old, big old trailer. I had a semi, a Class A license. How do I go from being a Class A truck driver to a bishop at churches on five continents because I went to sleep. Genesis 1-5. <laughs> I have really don't remember. Okay, so the evening and the morning were the... So here, here's, here's, here's my, my point is that we look at uh, what we're familiar with and that influences how we see Scripture. And since I've learned, I know I got to read this differently. My day starts at night. So when I go to bed, that's the beginning of my work day. So I purpose to get quality sleep. And one of the things I do, now this is pastorally speaking, but I did this before I was a pastor. I would meditate on a scripture. Get a scripture in my head, and that's what I go to bed with. I keep a, used to keep a journal next to my bed and a pencil and a pen. I'm going to show you why in just a second. And it's, please come next Sunday. This is foundation. I mean, next, next two Sundays, I'm going to really drop this, and you're going to really see how this is Bible. I love to praise your holy name. I mean, we, we, and that's good. I love how we do church, and, and we, we dance, and I was watching a YouTube on the praise breaks, and everybody praise breaking, but your life is still broken. And that's not a criticism. We, we miss it. Even in the morning, we're the first day. Sleep is a priority for me. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. And God called the firmament in heaven above. So the evening and the morning were the what? What was the second day? Have you noticed something? What's, what comes first? Verse 13. Read it, please. Verse 19. Verse 23. Verse 31. Evening precedes the day. So maybe, maybe, because I'm going to tell you something, how you start something is going to really determine how you finish it. So I start my nights strong. Starts my night with prayer. Come on, babe, about to go to bed, let's pray. I pray. And often my, my, my prayer in the evenings, Lord, touch our bodies that were refreshed and rejuvenated. My mind is renewed. 
that my sleep is sweet and peaceful. So I wake up ready for that which you've appointed me to do. So my day begins with rest. So notice the priority there. Notice the priority. Psalms 127, verse 2. Psalms 127, 2, please. <laughs> it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved what? I'm going to bed. See, my family, they like to get together, and, and my, my boys and, and my daughter-in-laws, right? And they love, we, they love, our family loves board games. And we, we know, just like some of y'all play cards and dominoes and y'all talk trash, we talk trash too. But, but when we plan, and here's the thing, right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, guess what I tell them? I got to go. I remember one time we were at Lavelle's house in, in Chino, and, and Jackie, she like, keep playing. Okay, you come home when you come home. I'm going home. I'm going to sleep. They should be so full of energy. That's what they were saying in Israel. You so, it, it's because I go to sleep. They said, how you doing? How you doing that? Because I go to sleep. One third of my time, I would say at least a quarter of my life is spent with my eyes closed. And see, I trust God and that's how I'm able to do everything else. Trust him. Now, he gives his beloved so then why aren't we taking it? Why are you trying to stay up? Well, girl, this is the series finale. <laughs> I was watching, you know, the popular show is This Is Us. Some of y'all really like that. I, 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 it's not my favorite show. And, and the reason is I like the actors and all that, but they never get a breakthrough. Them the saddest people there is always an issue. It's always some sorrowful. It's just like every time you, I, I, I just, I can't live like that. I'm sorry. No, I think I watched four or five episodes. I'm like, baby, you're on your own on this one, okay? Because we got this thing. Is this a show for us? I'm like, no, that's a show for you, okay? It's not my kind, okay? All right, it's not. But, but, but my point is that sometimes, I, um, um, like I, I saw recently the series finale, they were doing, a, what was it, the wobble, but, 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 you know, that, that everybody does that, that dance, you know, uh, and it's cool, you know, I, so it's like, I like the show. I mean, that's good, but uh, no, no, I don't know how to dance, okay? But my point is this. Some people like to say, we know. <laughs> no shame in my game. It is what it is, okay? I'm standing in my lane. Dancing is not my lane, okay? A little Kiki, who, do, you know, one of our younger, because Kiki, 30, she might be 30 right now. Yeah, and so she's going, we, we at Lavelle's wedding, right? And she's like, come on, Bishop, let me show you, how to, let me show you this. I'm like, sweetie. <laughs> no, no, because she's a choreographer. So now she's she going to help me. <laughs> she got her feelings hurt, okay? I got out there. I'm doing something. I'm doing something. She's like, okay, that's okay. Go, you can go sit <laughs> You can go back and sit down. <laughs> but my point is this. We get so caught up in stuff, but he gives his beloved sleep. Why do we resist it? He's God the creator. And if he rested on the seventh day, and if Jesus said, come and sit, set aside for a while, I think we should also. Let me share something with you. Without sleep, you can't form or maintain the neural pathways in your brain that let you learn and create new memories. Ah, I can't remember. I can't concentrate at work. Go to sleep. And it's harder to concentrate and respond quickly. You're in a board meeting, uh, 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 I go to sleep. Because, watch this, without sleep, you can't form or maintain the newer pathways in your brain. You can't. You can't. I'm getting older. That ain't age. That's like a sleep. Second, recent findings suggest that sleep plays a housekeeping role that removes what? In your brain. That build up while you are. Can you hand me my prop, please? So my question for you, what housekeeping takes place when you don't sleep? What takes place when you don't sleep? None. So the toxins keep building up. They keep building up because you won't sleep. You won't sleep. You won't sleep. Staying awake means you got all these toxins in your brain. So this is the way I picture it at night. I go to sleep. All of a sudden, this little man comes out. He just starts sweeping away all the things that are not of God. Everything that shouldn't be there. 
everything that's toxic, that works against me, that works against the promises of God in my life, he comes in and it just sweeps my brain. It's just getting swept, just getting clean. Well, we came home yesterday, and the gardener had come to our house, and it was so good to pull up in the driveway. Uh, the Vernons dropped me and Jackie off, and the yard was just nice. Leaves, everything, just, just swept clean, just swept clean. This is what happens in my brain while I'm asleep. All the old toxins are being swept away. Now, if I want to stay awake, the toxins remain. My sleep is to be sweet, sweet. Otherwise, toxins are there. There's no cleaning. You ever been to somebody's house and it's just nasty? I used to sell insurance. And then I would have to go to, I would always go to the kitchen table. You want to do, you want to do business at the kitchen table. And I remember one time, thank you, thank you, minister. I put my, 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 um, my little portfolio, my little flip chart on, on the, on the, like, kind of like laid, laid it down here to do my little presentation. And it got stuck because it was so sticky. And you see people, they just like hoarders. There's just stuff everywhere, just stuff, just stuff, just stuff. You know, they, they got crumbs and they got stuff and just, you know, and some people, that's how they live. You know, it's just how they are. And that's how some people's brains are when you don't go to sleep. So, Bishop Tony, how do you hold so much in your heart? I go to sleep. And this little housekeeping person comes out and just begins to sweep. Now, this is why it's so important. Begin because then the Lord begins to speak. That's why I keep that journal by my nightstand. It used to be a journal. Right now, I keep my phone. I wake up in my heartbeat and records whatever God gives me. I would say 90% of what I teach comes to me when I'm asleep. I just like, bam, wake up. Oh, that's a good one. That's my secret. So then when I'm awake, I'm vigilant, sober, and alert because we have an enemy that goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And a lot of times my productivity or the confusion is because I won't sleep. Repeat after me. I must lie down so that I can stay up. I must lie down so that I can stay up. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads, please. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is alive. It's a living thing. It will not return to you void, dear Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, we fully understand the importance of rest and sleep, dear Lord God. Father, studies continually show that we need seven, eight, or even nine hours of sleep a day, Father God. And it's sometimes suggested, especially as we age, that we take a nap in the afternoon. And I sometimes, Father, we just get so inundated and we get our identity through solving other people's problems, especially our children, dear Lord God. And we get so enmeshed, Heavenly Father, in our children's lives that it's actually detrimental to us. And Father, my prayer is that we will hear clearly from you. And then, Father, it takes so much courage to think differently and behave differently, to move away from the familiar, Heavenly Father, and ways that we believe and the paradigms that we believe serve us, served us well into a space, Heavenly Father, where you're calling us to be. So I thank you for great faith, dear Lord God, that we will lie down, Father, so that we can, in a kingdom sense, stay up, Heavenly Father. And with head bows, head, heads bowed and eyes closed, if there's anybody here, even online, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now I'm talking, I was, today I was talking about sleep and rest. And I'm going to build upon that next two Sundays. You're really going to see how that plays out, biblically speaking, how God speaks best. Many of you are saying, like, I can't hear from God. It's because you're not sleeping. You're not resting. So much more is on your mind. I'm going to share with you coming, but here's the thing. That's about life here. But what about life eternal? If you were to die today, where are you going? Where's your spirit to go? There's one or two places, the hell or heaven. You say, well, I'm a good person. Well, I, I want you to know your best is not good enough to get you into heaven. Because the problem is we've all sinned. Every one of us has sinned. You missed a mark. You come up short. You've done something wrong. And Jesus came. The reason he came was to pay the price for our sins. If, if there was something we could do on our own, as some other religions teach, then there would have been no reason for Jesus to have come. But he came for our eternal salvation. If you don't know him, just lift your hand right now. Lift your hand right now. 
And if you're online, I just need you to text New Day Connect, one word, to 94000. Just text New Day Connect to 9400 and say, hey, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And as soon as we get to text, one of our to text, one of our amazing ministers will get right back with you to share with you, to share with you. Also, too, if you don't have a church home and you would like to make New Day your church home, if you want to get rooted here, here's the thing. I want you to trust me. If God has sent you here, you need to get planted. You need to get rooted. Trust him. If you have not joined New Day and you would like to make New Day your church home, lift your hand, please. Lift your hand, please. Also, too, if online, just simply text New Day Connect. Text us at 94000-94000. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Now, this is the part in the service where you can participate through your giving. Here at New Day, we have three ways to give. First, you can text us. Text New Day Corona to 77977 and follow the instructions in your text message. Or you can visit us online. Visit newdaycorona.org and click the giving tab. Lastly, you can mail your gift to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California, 92882. Here at New Day, we also have an offering confession. Let's declare it together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. For we are blessed to be a blessing and we will care for the widows and orphans. In Jesus' name, amen. We lift our shouts to you, our King, Maker and Ruler of every. Yours is the name, above all names, and we worship, we give you, we lift our worship to Yours is the power, yours is the glory, both